Um, we'll have a presentation from um, ProVeg, which will give an overview about uh, planetary meals and what kind of sustainable and plant-based meals you can integrate within your schools. Uh, then we have a presentation from Incredible Edible, which will look at opportunities around composting and food growing. Um, and then Hope is going to lead us in a, an interactive session just to, to learn and hear about what you're doing on your schools. So one of the things we've found so far is um, it's really helpful for you guys to hear what's happening across the schools. There's a lot of common barriers that are being faced um, and we'll look to brainstorm with some solutions. And then we'll conclude with uh, just some next steps and immediate actions that that you can take. Next slide, please, Hope. So just as a, a precursor, um, some of you may be aware, may have seen that the Department of Education has um, put forward a, a sustainability and climate change strategy. And one of the elements of that is that by 2025, they will be looking to schools to all have nominated sustainability leads as well as climate action plans in place. Um, I think some of the schools have already started to put some of these in place um, and we've shared a few resources, the resource pack um, and also the Lambeth's broader climate action plan, which hopefully provides a basis for you, for you to look at. But we hope that this um, network will also be an opportunity to kind of get ahead of those policies, look at the ideas that others are doing and figure out what makes most sense for your school in terms of, of setting up those climate action plans. Um, so again, just as a reminder, this network is really about um, empowering local schools to be involved in climate action, looking at what we're, as, we're doing as a borough and connecting you guys with other types of resources, um, looking at funding opportunities, looking at toolkits and, and learning from what other, what other schools are doing. Slide, please. Um, and it, and as a reminder, what what the kind of main aspects that we're providing through the network, and we're always um, we're always really eager to hear from from parents and teachers um, in the school community about what's most useful. But we're looking at trying to create that peer to peer learning, um, connecting you up with sustainability experts, hosting kind of themed workshops that that align with the, the topics that are of most interest. Um, and what we're really encouraging our schools to do is to to look at our um, resource pack and look at the kinds of actions that they can take this year. So setting out what are your three actions, the three climate goals that you want to do, working towards developing a climate action plan and just getting involved in the network, sharing your challenges, sharing your successes, sharing your stories as well. Ready? Next slide, Hope. Um, and then just as a reminder and hope if you want to maybe put the link again in the chat already, there's quite a few resources that we've been putting on the Lambeth um, School Partnership webpage. Uh, we've been trying to pull together roundups, which just summarize any um, grant opportunities that we've come across, any new toolkits that um, we have, as well as any case studies. Our resource pack is online, so please do take a look at um, at the, the online platform. Um, there's a load of resources that are already available there and we'll also do kind of roundups after each meeting just to let you know what's available. Um, so without any further ado, I guess I will hand over to our next speaker and we'll, we'll get into the mix of it. Thanks Cassidy. Um, hi everybody, I'm Colette Fox. I am Head of Programme at ProVeg UK. We are a global organisation. Um, we've got teams in 11 countries and in the UK we're completely focused on making um, healthier and more sustainable school food. So next slide, please. I'll tell you a little bit about it all. Apologies, a bit of a lag. Sorry, Hope. Next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah, so very simply, I'm going to whiz through these because we've got, we're very short of time. So our aims with school plates are to make school food both healthier and more sustainable. Um, we know we have an obesity crisis and we know we have a, a, a climate crisis. So plant-based food is a great way to tackle both of those problems. Um, it also, um, the feedback we get from our partners that we work with is that it's saving them money by doing this. And it's also more inclusive. So if you have children with particular allergies or intolerances, dairy, eggs, that kind of thing. I mean, there's lots of others. Um, or children of different faiths who need to eat a particular diet, this is much more inclusive. So it makes um, catering for children that much simpler. Next slide, please. 
So this slide is basically just telling you that we know what we're doing. We work with a lot of local authorities um, up and down the UK, um, 42 major catering partners, and we're in discussions with over 30 more. Thousands of schools are being impacted by the menus that we're helping to develop, and we're up to nearly 900,000 children that are eating from these menus every day. Um, next slide, please. So there's two slides I want you to really focus on. This is one of them. If you if you don't take away anything else, um, we, we get look at loads and loads of menus all the time. This is what we do. Um, we've taken the average, most kind of typical meals that we see in primary schools that are meat based, those that are vegetarian. And we have our own plant based recipes of kind of classic school food dishes. And we've run the averages of the CO2 emissions. So our plant based dishes are just over a quarter of a typical meat-based dish and about half of a typical vegetarian dish. Um, so it just to really kind of hit home what a massive difference having a bit more plant-based food in your menus can make. That's that. Next slide, please, Hope. This is the other slide I want you to remember, <laughs> to concentrate on. So again, it's just really good to show the difference this stuff makes. We know it, but it, the, these are the facts really. So a spaghetti bolognese is a very typical dish we would see. Um, so the, the, the one on the left, um, sorry, the one on the left has uh, be, minced beef in it, 60 grams for a primary portion. And the one on the right hand side, the plant-based version, is 30% lentils and 50% um, lentils, sorry, and 50% um, soy protein. So um, we know that plant-based food has lower emissions on here. These two being directly compared, it's less than a third of the, of the emissions on the plant-based version, but it's also 27% cheaper, 87% lower in saturated fat and has more than double the fiber, which is really, really important. And the thing that most children and adults are missing out on in their diet that is the, you know, a huge predictor of um, avoiding chronic disease later in life. Um, I've also flagged here the protein levels because this is something that people get concerned about. Will they get enough protein? Yes, you will have no issue with getting enough protein out of a well-balanced plant-based dish. So they're almost identical and they're both quite high in protein. So just to, yeah, on all, on all fronts, it, it's, um, it's winning. <laughs> Next slide, please, Hope. Um, we've got free resources, so we have a recipe book we've created. These are all free to download on our website, and we've got the um, the guide, which just explains the program, all the evidence behind it. Everything we do is evidence based, so you can look that all up. And you've got the recipes there, all made, um, all costed, all the nutrition analysis, all the carbon analysis. Really simple. Um, the recipes are for ten primary school portions, so they can just be scaled up very easily, and they're tried and tested across the UK and um, being enjoyed by thousands of children. Um, next slide, please. Um, we run workshops, so we come out and we train caterers um, for local authorities. We do this a multi-academy trust. We will come out and um, train you for half a day or a full day, depending on what you need. For individual schools, we run online versions of the workshops. So these are once a month for an hour, um, and we can send you the link round to register for those if you'd like to see what that's all about. But we come and we explain why it's really important, um, address any kind of concerns that any of your caterers or your school team have, and then we get cooking. Um, next slide, please. And this is the kind of stuff that we, we make or we get your caterers to make. So these are some of our kind of most popular dishes, things like mac and cheese, spaghetti and plant power balls, we've got Sri Lankan coconut curry and Singapore noodles and chocolate brownies and ice cream made out of bananas. So it's delicious stuff that children love. It's colorful, it's fresh and it's low cost. Um, next slide, please, Hope. Uh, we've launched recently our School Plates Awards. So this is really our way of thanking any caterers who are trying to move in the right direction with, with um, more planet friendly food. So we have a checklist of actions, which I'll, will pop up on the screen in a second. But again, we have a handbook on our website. Um, we can send you the link to that and you can download it. It's completely free to enter. Um, and we, you send us in your menus, we go through them. 
and we give you some feedback on against the different actions of what the kind of simple next steps you can take and you might even win an award we've just started announcing our first winners we've got some councils and we've got um some individual schools who are sweeping those prizes um next slide please this is just a really, really quick um, overview of what the awards um, actions look like. So this is really our School Plates programme in 23 actions. This is just a real quick summary of what those are. You can get the full details and explanations in the handbook. Um, next slide, please, Hope. Um, if you're interested in this topic, there's a great um, Radio 4 Inside Science programme from January. If you just go into the BBC, sounds app or the website you can just um, search for inside science and it's called vegetarian school dinners um, it's a great episode it's 30 minutes you've got views from teachers children parents climate scientists we're in there too henry dimbleby author of the national food strategy talking about this topic and why it's so important so i would thoroughly recommend you to check that out for a good rounded view and i think um, next slide we're just about there so um, that's us, ProVeg School Plates. Our website is really simple, ProVeg.com. Um, if you want to get in touch with any questions or have a chat, then schools at ProVeg.com. And if you would like to enter the awards, it's a slightly different email address, schoolplatesawards at ProVeg.com. Um, yeah, get in touch. And if anybody has any questions now, uh, I'm happy to take those. Thank you. Great, Colette, thanks so much. Is there any any quick questions before um, we go into our next speaker? Anyone had um, anything they'd like to ask? We'll have we'll have a bit of a chance to kind of chat through in more detail what you're doing at your own schools um, during our interactive session. But if there were any burning questions, pop, please raise your hand now. Otherwise, we'll hand over to our next speaker. Okay. Yes. Oh, got there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hi, everyone. I'm from Incredible Edible Lambeth. Incredible Edible is a national movement. In fact, it's global, but it's mostly in the U supporting local food. And we are essentially supporting food growers. We have around about 200 group members and um, and then seven or eight hundred or um, individual members. So next slide, please. And I'll tell you a little bit more. Rather boring slide, but it's a very important slide because it shows veg seedlings um, growing in uh, seed trays in a greenhouse. I think uh, many of the people on this call today, I can see some familiar names, will know um, why it's so important to grow food and multiple um, reasons to grow your own food. So I won't read those out, but um, and I'm sure these slides can be shared later, but it, it really makes a massive difference to our diets if we grow our own food and um, we're doing something for um, the environment because we're reducing food miles and um, uh, local is so much better for you in terms of the nutritional value of that veg or fruit. Next slide please. So um, this is a polytunnel. I think it's probably at Myatt's, but I'm not certain. Uh, Myatt's Field Park is a big place where we grow uh, seeds and seedlings. Uh, so we encourage people to grow food on any area of land in Lambeth. And um, we advocate for more food growing. We support with seeds and seedlings. Uh, if you become a member, you get a monthly newsletter. Uh, we run workshops online and in person, and we run an annual award scheme, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a moment. Next slide, please. So why is it so important to grow food in schools? I think this is probably at Heathbrook, isn't it, Ben? I can see Ben is here. Um, 
Uh, there are so many reasons to grow food. Kids absolutely love to get outside, especially the primary school kids. And don't forget that many of these children may never have experienced putting their hands in the soil before. Um, I've established two veg gardens in a primary school and a secondary school, and both of them were incredibly experienced. Um, I don't know if there are any secondary schools here today. It tends to end up being a primary school initiative, but I actually think it's very, very important at the next level, because essentially we have two generations who have uh, are so disconnected from the land that they have absolutely no understanding of where food comes from any longer. So this is a fundamentally important um, life lesson of understanding how to grow food. Um, it tends to get sidelines. It's often um, down to one enthusiastic teacher, which is a huge burden given how much more how much you all have to do already. Um, or it's a it's an enthusiastic volunteer, parent volunteer. It's so important to embed it in the curriculum, which I know here the field and Heathbrook have done, um, who are here today, and um, they will say more about that and the massive benefits. But there's a list of all the reasons why it's just such a fantastic thing to do. Next slide, please. So a little bit about how we can support you with food growing. Um, if your school is in the Vassen Cold Harbour Ward, uh, we grow on seedlings at Mightsfield Park and we can provide you with veg seedlings, which obviously helps you get past that first bit of, of uh, sowing all those seeds, which can be a great thing. Uh, we have two categories in the annual Blooming Lambeth Awards for schools, and I'll tell you about that in a second, but uh, that is a big draw for many people. We can provide advice on food growing. Uh, normally, Incredible Edible has a paid coordinator who has unfortunately recently had to leave IEL, but um, we will have another one soon and they come into schools and can help you uh, make some decisions about how you might set about growing food in your school. Become a member, join up as a uh, as a group member. Um, we, we'd love that if you did. Uh, you then receive a monthly newsletter, which will tell you uh, a whole load of stuff about where you might um, get compost or um, seeds. We have an annual seed swap. Um, there's the multitude of, of um, things that you can learn about from that newsletter. So please do think about signing up. We've recently started a youth volunteer program for 14 to 17 year olds. We've done a pilot in West Norwood Library. If you have a connection um, with a library and they've got some land, that is something we'd love to hear from you about. Is um, I don't know if there are secondary schools here today, but this is something that we think this might be a good way of just initiating um, um, those sort of relationships. These um, volunteer um, kids wanted to do something for their volunteer hours for uh, Duke of Edinburgh. So uh, they started uh, growing food on a Saturday in West Norwood Library's land. And um, we've also started, um, we've got money from the Climate Action Fund and we're supporting food composting, food waste composting on estates in Lambeth. So if your school is has um, parents and children from a neighbouring estate, please invite them and they're really interested in food growing and composting. Please, um, it's a weird thing to be interested in, I know, but it's unbelievably important. Please ask them to get um, in touch with us because we're looking for new sites. Compost is often the most expensive element of setting up um, a food growing area. So um, growing, um, having your own processing your food waste is is a really valuable thing to do. Next slide, please. These is the I mentioned the annual Blooming Lambeth Awards. This is the one time in the year where we all get together and it's a really great event. Um, two categories, best school, best young volunteer. Nominations are opening on the 1st of May and deadlines are uh, for entries are 30th of June. So do um, consider putting your school forward. 
I've listed um, some of the schools that have um, received prizes from us before. It's good prize money, so uh, there's an incentive for you, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, that was the poster that the young volunteers created for West Norwood Library, which they did this all on their own, um, and that was their bit of publicity. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, we made a really lovely film about four schools in Lambeth, and sadly, we were going to have a big um, jamboree where we showed it, a um, premiere, film premiere, and that was, guess what, March 2020. So sadly, we had to um, postpone showing that film. And I'll put the link in the chat um, so that you can watch it. Please do watch it. It's super inspiring. And I think that's about it from me. Next slide. I think that's the final one. Yeah, please do join IEL today. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much for that, Janie. Um, again, just quick, if there was anyone that uh, had any quick questions related to anything 